Church Vision. Good morning. Yeah, that's what we're supposed to do. Buenos dias, Fresh Good Visions. Morning. Good morning. Yeah. It is a beautiful day. Amen. Amen. It is a cold. <laughs> it is know. a cold morning. But how do we know it's cold? Because we can feel it. Amen. And if we wasn't alive, we couldn't feel it. So we need to be giving praise just to be alive and to feel the cold. Some folks, as the old folks who used to say, some people woke up on their cooling board this morning, okay? They in the cooling board, but they don't know that they on the cooling board. But we can feel it in our bones. We can feel it in our bones. It chills us, but we got a fire deep within because we serve the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Amen. We welcome you this morning. We greet you in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, who is the Savior, who is the Messiah, who is the King of Kings, who is the Lord of Lords. All right, the one that went to the cross on our behalf, and it's because of his blood that we can walk and move and breathe. Amen. And these children this morning, let's go ahead and just give them a pre, a pre applause. These children are going to let you know who they are worshiping, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So why don't you help us out with a clap or with whatever you can muster up for praise and worship. He is the King of Kings. Son of God. The promised one is Son of God. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the Lord. 
Amen. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. What's his name, y'all? Jesus. 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 Yeah, he is the King. Let's give our young people another big hand. Let us esteem them in here before they esteem them out there. Amen? Amen. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Amen. Come on, let's just worship God even the more for our young people. Because what I know is that if we don't, someone else will. So we want to make sure that we encourage them. Encourage them because it's scary sometimes to get up here and look out into the faces sometimes of those who are not smiling. <laughs> it's scary as an adult to get up here and look out into the faces sometimes of those who are not smiling. But we are so happy uh, about how God is using, using our young people. And we want to encourage you parents, one, to keep bringing them, but there are, there's room for more. Amen. It's not just us four and no more. There's room for more. So we encourage you to get your young people involved. What I know is we get them involved in everything else. I run around, we run around, taking our grandson here, taking him there. And so what we want to make sure that we do is that we uh, get them involved in the cause of Christ. Get them involved in this faith walk. Uh, of a God who is just able, God who does exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And on this week, I was telling the praise and worship team, the song, the first song that we will minister and that we invite you to stand and join in with us on. I have been singing it all week and thinking about it all week. And I tried to get away from it because I said, okay, we don't have a musician per se, and that song isn't on the, the, the worship app. <laughs> and every time I, I, I turned to WLUJ, and this particular song was playing on the radio, and I was like, okay. Then I turned to a station out of Carlinville, and this particular song was playing on that station. I turned on Sirius XM, and these are three different times, and this song was playing on the station. I was like, okay, God, we're gonna do it. So I text Miss Sharita and I was like, okay, we're gonna do this song on Sunday. Um, we're gonna do it a cappella. Then this morning during our prayer time, Brother Alvin used these very words. It was almost like God was confirming uh, and reminding us that he is the source of our life. Yeah and that we can't do anything without him. Amen. It was like he was just nudging me, yeah. reminding me even the more that it's in him that we live, it's in him that we move, and it's in him that we have our very being. And we have to be reminded sometimes not to take maybe what we call basic things for granted. And so I don't know about you, but everything that I am, everything that I even hope to be, and everything that I have yet to become, it's all because of him. Yes. And I would venture to say that everything you are, everything that you hope to be, and everything that you even venture to become, it's because of him. He's the source of life. And I know that I can't do anything without him. Apart from him, we can do nothing. We want to invite you this morning, not to just spectate, but we want to invite you into the presence of an almighty God Amen. who is able, who is our source of joy, who is the reason for our being. Amen. And so even if you have a shower voice, let's say, we want you to join in and sing with us this morning because really, you're not singing to us, you're singing to God. We just happen to be here listening in. And so we invite you on this morning to join in 
as we worship God. This song says, God, you are the source of life. And I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Because without him, I don't know where else I would go. So we invite you to stand as we sing this song that says, God, you are the source of life. And that we can't do anything without you. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's just give God a hand clap of worship on this morning as we are being intentional with our worship and intentional with our praise. Amen. Thank you, God. You are, you are the source of life. And I can't be left behind. No one else will do. And I will, and I will take hold of you. Let's say that again. You are the source. You are the source of life, and I can't be left behind. No one else will do, and I will, and I will take hold of you. Cause I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Where else? Where else can I go? There's no other name by which I am saved. follow you I will follow you verse 2 my heart is yours for life hallelujah God here we go my heart is yours my heart is yours for life and I need your my trust in you. I put my trust in you cause, cause I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Where else? Where else can I go? There's no other name. There's no other name by which I am saved. I am saved. Cause I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Where else? Where else can I go? There's no other name by which I am saved. Capture me. Capture me. Cause I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Where else? Where else can I go? No other name. There's no other name by which I am saved. Capture me with grace. Capture me. will follow you. 
I will follow you, O oh God. I will follow you. Come on, help us say that. I will follow. I will follow you. Say it again. I will follow. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. I will follow you. This world has nothing for me. Cause I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. If you've got a made up mind and a determined heart that you will follow him, come on and worship him. If you are in agreement with me that you'll let nothing separate you from the love of God and that you will follow him, come on and worship him this morning. Hallelujah. With the fruit of your lips, come on and worship him. With the hands and the instrument that he has given us with our hands, come on and worship him. If you're determined to walk with Jesus all the way, come on and worship him this morning. Hallelujah. He is so worthy. He is so worthy. He is so worthy. Every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Hallelujah. Just chasing me down. His grace and his mercy. I said, Lord, I'll go. Pastor challenged us the other week. He said, who will go? Here am I. Send me, I'll go. I lift up both of my hands. Here am I, oh God. Send me. Hallelujah. We got to be willing to be used by him. Hallelujah. Bless his name this morning. Yeah, I can't make it without him. I can't make it without him. I can't make it without him. The enemy is so busy. Hallelujah. But God says that he would be with me through it all. Hallelujah. Through the good and the bad. Through my ups and my downs. Through life's crazy turnarounds. God said that he would be with me. Hallelujah. And I got a feeling from looking out in this audience that somebody else knows that he'll be with you too. Hallelujah. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to depend on him. Through it all, I've learned how to surrender my will to his will. Hallelujah. He is worthy this morning. He is worthy. He is worthy this morning. He is worthy. And I just want him to have his way. Have his way, not just in this place. Have his way in the lives of his people. Have his way in our hearts. Have his way in our minds. Have his way in our will. Because sometimes we can be disobedient. We're going one way when we know God told us to go the other way. So I want him to have his way. And I'm not selfish, not just in my life, but in your life too. I want him to have his way. Hallelujah. Anybody else want God to have his way? Anybody else want to put up both of your hands and say, God, I surrender. I don't want to be the same in 2024 that I was in 2023. 
God, I want you to light a fire on the inside that makes me move, not just move with emotion, but move with action so that my will gets lost in your will. And God, whatever it is that you tell me to do, I surrender. It's almost like a stick up. Put your hands up. I surrender to you, oh God. Hallelujah. He's worthy. We want him to overflow. We want the power of his presence to overflow in this place. We want him to have his way in this place. Anybody want more of him? Anybody want more of him? Hallelujah. More of you, oh God and less of me more of you oh god and less of me oh god have your way thank you god can we do it after can we do it after all right come on sister teresa our scripture this morning comes from psalms 125 those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. I read to you Psalms 125 verses 1 and 2. May the Lord have a blessing on the reader, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. If you guys notice, uh, we're um, in um, battle clothing today. <laughs> um, and um, if you're anything like me, there's been some things that when I chose to engage in this fast and prayer, there's been some things that's been trying to pull me back, back into old habits, mm. back into... Um, things that I used to do um, and this word says that um, whenever a man cleans house of a spirit there are seven more that comes oh, back oh God, oh God. and so we're war ready on today because we want to fight in the spirit we want to fight in the spirit on today we want to fight in the spirit against those things that seek to keep us from God we want to fight in the spirit against those things that tries to get us to go back to the things that we used to do and be. And we want to fight in the spirit for each other. There are some things that our loved ones and our neighbors and everything and the people of God are going through. And so we not only fight in the spirit for each for us, but we fight in the spirit for each other. Yes, God. And so may we go before the Lord with an attitude of fighting in the spirit. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come surrendering to you onto this day, Father God. Jesus, Jesus. For you are the Alpha and the Omega, Lord. You are the beginning and the end, Father God. You are everything, Father God, and more, Lord. Apart from you, Lord, we can do nothing, Father God. By your grace, Father God, we're here on today, Lord. It's only because you woke us up this morning and started us on our way, Father God, that we're even here on today, Father God. You allowed us, Lord, to press our way into church on this morning, Father God, in spite of the cold, Father God, and in spite of everything going on around us. Everything, Lord, tried to keep us from getting here on today, Father God. There were some forces at work, Father God, that tried to keep us, Father God, lay stayed in our beds, Father God. But you, oh God, Father God, allowed us to be here on today, Father God, just to lift up the name of Jesus, Lord, and to give you praise. Praise, Father God, and we decree and declare yeah. on this day, Father God, that we will not turn back in the name of Jesus. How can we, Lord, when you've done everything for us, Father God? How can we turn back on our old ways, Father God? Because you've been too good for us, Father God. So we surrender on today, Father God. We fight in the spirit on today, Father God. We say no in the name of Jesus. 
No, you can't have our children, Father God. No, you cannot have our, our, our minds. No, you can't have our hearts. No, you can't have our bodies. We surrender them to the only true living sovereign God. For it is in him that we live, move, and have our being, Father God. So we're grateful on today, Father God, because we know that we can give all things over to you, Father God. And we know, Father God, that you will handle them, Lord, according to your riches and glory, Father God. So in the name of Jesus, Lord, let your Shekinah glory saturate this atmosphere, Father God. Meet your people, Father God. Every person in this space and under the sound of my voice, Father God, enter into their hearts, Father God. Make them experience you in a new way, in a supernatural way, Father God, in a way that they've never done so before, Father God. Let them leave this place, Father God. Change, Father God. Refine us fire. Purify our hearts on today, Father God. Refine us fire. Purify our minds on today, Lord. Refine us fire. Purify us on this day, Father God. Anything that is not like you, Lord, remove it from us in the name of Jesus, Lord. We want to just be pleasing in your sight, Lord. So have your way in this place, Father God. Move in a mighty way, Lord. And we'll be so careful to give your name the praise and glory and honor, Father God. For you're worthy on today, Lord. Not unto us, Father God, but all unto you, Father God. The worship doesn't belong to us. It belongs to you, Father God. We surrender our voices, Lord. We surrender our hearts and our minds to you, Father God. We surrender our praises unto you, yeah, Father God, yeah, God, for you're worthy, Lord. Yeah, have yeah, your God. way in this place, have Lord. Way, oh in the name of Jesus, yeah, yeah, we pray. Yeah. Thank Amen. You, God. Thank you, God. Overflow in this place. to you take it out of me if it's not pleasing to you take it out of me God if it's not pleasing to you take it out of me have your way and if it's not pleasing to you 
if it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. And if it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. God, if it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. Have your way. Yeah, yeah. Can you all help us say that? Help us say, if it's not, if it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. If it's not, if it's not pleasing to you, help me let it go. If it's not pleasing to you, help me let it go. If it's not pleasing to you, help me let it go. Have your way. Come on, let's say it again. If it, if it's not pleasing to you. Let it go. If it's not pleasing to you, help me let it go. If it's not pleasing to you, help me let it go. Have your way. Come on, overflow. Overflow, overflow 
you want him to have his way. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. goodness is love. Thank the Lord for worship on today. Praise God. Let's thank the Lord for our children's choir. Let's thank the Lord for them leading us in wonderful worship. Now let's thank God for our adult music ministry who has continued to build on what the children started. It's third Sunday. It's third Sunday and this is children's church sunday and our children have an opportunity to learn at their own level and grow together so they are exiting uh at the rear of the church or the entrance part of the church i guess for some and they're moving around to the fellowship hall and then they'll be going to their designated classes for ages of appropriate and we're grateful for them what a blessing it is to walk through the uh, building and go through the classroom areas and we see classrooms filled with young people learning that's exciting and we want to encourage and invite others to bring their children and let them learn some send their children and we praise God for that too but it's a good thing when you see parents and children together learning together amen so we want to say praise God. Let's pray together as we continue in worship. God, thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much for the continued blessings, oh God. Thank you, God, for worship. Thank you, God, for your word that is read in, this, in scripture. Thank you, God, for the prayers that were lifted up to you. Thank you, God, for every person that's physically present. And thank you for those who are tuning in online. Thank you, God, for others who will join in later. We celebrate you, O oh God, on this day. There's none like you in all the earth. So we honor you, God. Lord, speak through your vessel. Lord, anything that's in my heart and mind that's, incons that's inconsistent with your will, pray that it be removed, O oh God, that they will hear you, experience you, see you in a personal way. This is our prayer with thanksgiving. We celebrate you, Lord. The church said hallelujah and amen. Praise God. Come on, thank the Lord one more time for his goodness, for his love. Praise God. Thank God for all of you and thank God for our ushers, our musicians. Thank God for our AV team. Uh, we don't 
tend to recognize our AV team when until something's wrong, right? We're looking back at them and say, wait, what's going on wrong? So thank you, uh, guys, for what you do. <laughs> As things are going right, all of you that are present, praise God for you. We know that the temperature has been chilly, but we thank God for the warmth of the Lord. Amen. We are grateful for his presence. Well, we have been working through our theme for our fast and our theme for this year. And... We are talking about intentional in our learning, intentional in our serving, and intentional in our worship. And since we've looked at the scriptures over the past two weeks um, on being intentional in our learning and being intentional in our serving, it just seems right to explore how we can be intentional in our worship. Amen. We got two people that got it right. It being intentional in our worship. And God has so much to say about worship. And for some of us, we, we are still learning about this important part of the Christian life. For some of us, we're still uh, leaning in on God and trying to hear what he is saying about being intentional about worship. For some of us, some of us are serious and yet we are still seeking because we want to give God all that we can in this area of worship. And some of us, we have neglected uh, to be authentic in this area of worship. Some of us have been, been, been negligent in this area. Some of us have been a little ashamed because, you know, when we lift, I say, lift, lift my hands, you know, lift them up a little bit, but, you know, not, not, not too much. You don't want to feel uh, um, over sanctified or over righteous or over holy, so you know, kind of, you know, you know, if we're at the ball game now, that's a whole different conversation, right? But let's let's look at what the Lord has to say about this area of worship. And I'm reading from the Old Testament of First Chronicles, the 16th chapter. And I want to read verses 23 through 31 and look at some of the, this is not all of them, but some of the ways that God calls us to worship him. First Chronicles 16, 23 through 31. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Notice what he says. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. Verse 25, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are, are idols but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness tremble before him all the earth the world also is firmly established it shall not be moved verse 31 let the heavens rejoice let the earth be glad and let them say among the nations the Lord reigns come on somebody say that today the Lord reigns 
That's a good place to praise the Lord. Good place to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When we think of worship, we think of honoring God, thanking God, living a holy life before God, praising God. And we think of fellowship with God and with other believers who are followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fellowship as believers is important. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't neglect, don't ignore the importance of fellowship with other believers. That word fellowship, koinonia, means united together. It means oneness. It means a coming together for a common cause. And we have to be careful not to allow the media or political jockeying, economical differences, and or our skin pigmentations cause us to miss out on fellowship, koinonia with one another. When we're in fellowship with one another, we don't get entrapped in trivial issues. And we can appreciate the uniqueness of the people around us. We all are unique. We all have our differences. But when we are in fellowship, we don't get entrapped over trivial issues. And we can still appreciate the uniqueness and our differences. Just want to share something. Some of you have heard this before. But for those who haven't heard it, and for others who've heard it, just listen in like you've never heard it before. <laughs> My dad's sister was Aunt Essie. And Aunt Essie lived to be 100 years old. Aunt Essie was active and she was on the go until she was in her 90s, driving her own car, living in her own home. And even when she was in her 80s, she was scheduling flights and flying by herself. So when my youngest sister got married in Memphis, Aunt Essie was in her 80s, Aunt Essie booked a flight and flew from Cleveland, Ohio to Memphis, Tennessee. Enjoyed the wedding and we were getting ready to go back. She had already prepared to catch a taxi. They didn't have Ubers back then. And then I said, Aunt Essie, I can take you. I was driving and said, you don't have to call no taxi. I can take you. I said, oh, boy, I catch the taxi. You go and do what you got to do. I said, no, I, I can take you. So I convinced her. She came down with her sweatsuit on and gym shoes. This 80 plus um, moving swiftly. I convinced her to let me carry her bags. And so we got there plenty of time and we uh, decided to have breakfast in the uh, airport before she went on to the part where I could not enter. And we had breakfast, sat down there, enjoying the fellowship with Aunt Essie. Yeah. And so she got her breakfast, I got her breakfast, I got mine, I paid for it. And then she got um, coffee and I got orange juice. And we sat down, and as we were getting ready to partake of our food, and as she forgot, remember that she had forgotten her stirrer for her coffee. And so now I'm getting ready to get up to get the stirrer for Aunt Essie coffee. But before I could get up, Aunt Essie snatched my straw out of my orange juice. And she began to stir her coffee with my straw that I had in my orange juice. And so now all I need to do is just go get me another straw. And so before I could get up and go get my straw, and as he stuck that same straw back down in my orange juice, and she never stopped fellowshipping right there together. I dare not take the straw out of my, <laughs> my orange juice. I just began to drink my orange juice and orange juice and coffee never tasted so good. 
because I enjoyed the fellowship with my Aunt Essie. I didn't get entrapped in the trivial issue of mixing coffee and orange juice together to cause a barrier between me and Aunt Essie or Aunt Essie and me. So I want to remind you that there's something special and meaningful when God's people can be united in fellowship and worship the Lord God Almighty together. Well, what is worship? What is worship? Yeah, yeah, that's a good place to say thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. So what is worship? What is worship? Worship is an expression of admiration. Worship is giving thanks to the Lord. Worship is to reverence the giver of all good and blessed things. And the scripture says that all good and blessed things come from above. Worship is to honor the Lord with a, listen at this, consistent and intentional lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, our lifestyle is a worship to the Lord because it points others to the Lord, our God. And aren't you thankful that the Lord is not secretive in his expectations of our honoring him through our worship? Go back to the text. Go back to the text. Verse 23, he points it out some areas. He says, here's a great way to worship me. Sing to the Lord. Here's another great way. Proclaim the good news of his salvation. Tell others about this great God that has set you free. Tell others about the power of God to heal. Tell others about the power of God to deliver Tell God, tell others about what God has done for you. Verse, verse 24, verse 24, declare his glory and his wonders among others. Tell others about God's love, power, and his forgiveness. Verse 25 offers a quick summary of why we should worship the Lord. For the Lord is great. <laughs> And greatly to be praised. That's enough right there. If you don't get nothing else out of the message today, tell somebody that the preacher said the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He's greatly to be feared, not running away from type fear, but reverenced, honored. What else can we learn about this word worship? In Hebrew, the word worship is shakah, shakah. And it really means, it literally means to bow down, to lower oneself, to be prostrate before God. In other words, worship is humbling ourselves before the holy God recognizing we're not God. So somebody else need to hear that because somebody's putting too much on their own shoulders, recognizing that we're not God. Some have too many high expectations of others. Let's take our eyes off ourselves right now. Other people are not God. We humble ourselves, we bow down, we prostrate ourselves before God. So it means to lower oneself, bow low before the Lord, not only physically, but humble ourselves in our hearts. Not only that, but worship is relational. It is not uh, a one-way street. We, 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 we're in communion with God and he is also in communion with us. Praise is somewhat different. Praise usually precedes worship. The psalmist in 100, Psalm 100 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. 
he goes on to say, be thankful unto him and bless his name. You can bless the Lord. Did you know that? Through your worship, you are blessing the Lord. Some are saying, Lord, bless me, but God is saying, bless me. Bless me with your worship, with your bowing down, with your humbling yourself. Verse 5 tells us why, 100, Psalm 105 says, tells us why we should uh, uh, worship the Lord. He says, because the Lord is good. And somebody know that he's good. And his mercy is everlasting. His truth doesn't run out. His truth endures to all generations. Do you know my grandmama knew about God's mercy? Do you know mama and daddy knew about, my, about God's mercy? Do you know that I know about God's mercy? And we taught our daughters about God's mercy. And we are teaching our grandchildren about God's mercy because his truth endures to all generations. It is, it is through our intimate time of worship of our king that we get to know our creator on more of an intimate basis. Because when you think about it and when you look back on your personal experience, someone knows God as a healer and someone knows him as a counselor. Someone knows God as a comforter. Someone knows God as a friend. Somebody knows God as a deliverer. And then others knows him through, know him through personal experience. Some know how he spoke peace in the midst of chaos. Some know how he opened doors. that appear to be closed. Some know how God moves scales from spiritually blinded eyes. Someone was ready to give up, but then there was a still, small voice that said, you can make it because I'm with you. You can make it because I made yesterday and I made today. And you haven't even made it to tomorrow, so don't give up. You can make it. In worship. Yeah, Lord, in worship. We have an open invitation. He often says, oh, come an open invitation to all of us. Oh, come. That's, that's his personal invitation. That's his invitation to all. He says, come, you who are sick. Oh, come, you who are well. Oh, come, you who are rich. Oh, come, you who are poor. Oh, come, who are well known. Oh, come, who are unknown. Oh, come who are in stable homes. Oh, come who are in broken homes. Oh, come who, are, who have joyful hearts. Oh, come who have broken hearts. The call is the same. Oh, come and worship and bow down before me, your Lord, your God, your creator. It's an open invitation to us all. Here's something else that's amazing. Here's something else that's amazing. And I'm almost done with this. I'm almost done with this. The scripture declares that the Lord, God Almighty, who knows all things, sees all things, who's in control of all things, don't really need none of us. But the scripture says he's seeking worshipers. Isn't that amazing? That, that kind of shook me there for a while. God Almighty, who has everything, owns everything, can speak and everything comes to existence, and yet this great God, holy and righteous, perfect, he's seeking 
people to worship him. Um, fragile people. Crackpot people. Messed up and jacked up people. He's looking for, seeking people to worship him. In John 4, 23, y'all remember the woman that was at the well. And she began to talk about all the other stuff and, and, and about Jacob's well and all of that. And Jesus went on to say that there's a time coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Yeah. And y'all know what seek means. He's looking for yeah. worshipers. <laughs> seek means to search out by any method. Whatever method he's using, he's seeking, he's looking for people who are willing to worship him. And so the question is, did the Father find you in worship? If he's looking for worship, if he's seeking by any method, where did he find us and what were we doing? Did, were, were there any times did he find us worshiping him and bowing down to him and going before him to honor him? As a reminder, as a reminder, as a reminder, and for those who were not with us the first Sunday, we were encouraged to be consistent. Don't, don't, don't stop greeting people because it's not Christmas. <laughs> don't, don't, don't stop being polite to people because it's not New Year. You still can drop a card in the mail. You still can say, hello, I'm thinking about you. you. Still can do nice things and gifts or service or helping with children and things of that nature. And there's always plenty of work to be done in the church, by the way, just in case anybody was wondering. But as a reminder, let's be consistent and let's be intentional throughout the year in our learning, in our serving, and in our worship. And listen, listen, don't have to be a prophet to tell you this. There will be some setbacks. There will be some disappointments. And sometimes there's going to be some pain. Sometimes you're going to fail. Sometimes you're going to fall on your face. Sometimes you're going to feel like the world is against you. But don't let that keep you from staying focused on the Lord while offering authentic worship. Let me read this, these few verses, and then tell a brief story, and then we're going to be out of here. Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 3. Those who've been in church any amount of time, you probably remember these verses. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. It helps us. It helps us to put things in perspective and then look at this journey as a race. He says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. That's one of them. That's one of them. Every weight. But he also says, and the sin. The weight, don't, not necessarily sin, but need to lay it aside. And then the sin speaks for itself, lay it aside. Which so easily ensnares us. He says, when you lay it aside, and this will help you, 
He said, then he says, let us run with endurance. The race that is set before us. It's a race set before all of us. Don't look at Jenny and Jim. Don't look at Larry and Lucy. Don't look at Mamie and Maymay. But he says, looking unto Jesus. Why should we look to Jesus? We look to Jesus because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Why should we look to Jesus? Because we can look at what he's already done. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Wasn't an easy task. It was a painful task. But he endured the cross. Despising the shame, it was an embarrassing and shameful cross. But he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He says, when you fall, when you fail, when you are disappointed, he says, when others despise you, don't look to the people for perfection. Look to the cross. And the one who hung on the cross and was buried and rose from the dead and now sits at the right hand of God. But hold up, there's verse 3. There's verse 3. He says, for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. He says, if you are looking to people to be your everything, if you're looking to jobs and bank accounts and educations to be your all in all. If you're looking for attaboys and attagirls and good job and nobody could do it like you and you never, we never seen it done this way before until you showed up. If you're looking for that to be your ultimate answer, he says you're looking at the wrong place. If you're looking for people to exalt you and to keep you up and through all of your mess or my mess, he says you're looking in the wrong place. But he says look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Consider what he did. He endured such hostility from sinners against him because if you don't do that, you're going to get weary, discouraged, and you're going to be ready to pack your bags and go home. You're going to want to get your little marbles. Do they still have marbles? You're going to want to get your little marbles. They used to have marbles and go back home. We started well, let's finish well. And here's the good news. I'm about to tell my little story and go home. The Father will help us to end well. And finishing well doesn't always mean you finish in first place. Finishing well doesn't always mean you're finishing second place. Finishing well doesn't always mean you're finishing third place. Finishing well doesn't always mean you get the gold medal. Finishing well doesn't always mean you get the silver medal. Finishing well doesn't always mean you get the bronze medal. Some of you are old enough or maybe have heard about it back in 1992. In the Barcelona Olympics, a guy by the name of Derek Redmond was running a 400-meter event. Derek had trained. He had prepared. He was expected to win. Derek was running, running his race. And all of a sudden, there was a pulled hamstring. Derek fell to the ground. 
He knew that he couldn't come in first. He knew he couldn't come in second. He couldn't come in third. The people were getting ready to come get Derek on the stretcher, but Derek waved them back. So Derek got up. And he started back. He wasn't running as fast as he was. In fact, he was just walking and walking with a limp. Derek knew he wouldn't finish first. He knew he wouldn't finish second. He knew that he wouldn't finish third, but he was determined to finish well. But here's the other part of it. As Derek is limping and he's hurting, he's crying, he's moving toward the finish line. Somebody comes. from the stands, breaking all the rules and pushing past security. Making his way down to the field was Jim. That was Derek's dad. Jim came to the field and he knew that his son wasn't gonna finish first, he wasn't gonna finish second, he wasn't gonna finish third, he wasn't gonna get a gold, wasn't gonna get a silver, wasn't gonna get a bronze. But Jim threw his arms around his son. And they both began to walk toward the finish line. One step at a time. Millions of people stood and waved. They didn't even, we don't even remember who won the race. We don't know who came in second. We don't remember who came in third, but we remember this father and son. And as they got close to the finish line, the dad just stepped back and allowed Derek to cross the line. Didn't get first place, didn't get second place, didn't get third, didn't get a, a gold, didn't get a silver, didn't get a bronze, but he finished well. Why do I tell that story? Why do I love that story? Because we got a God in heaven that saw us when we were at our worst, that saw us when we were hurt and disappointed. And he sent his darling son, Jesus Christ, and his son came down out of the stand, came out of the stands of heaven, came down and lifted us up out of our muck and our miry clay. He says, I won't let you finish the way you started. I won't, I won't let you finish with your hurt and pain by yourself. I will be with you and I will be in you. We don't always finish first. We don't always finish second. We don't always finish third. We don't always get the gold. We don't always get the silver. We don't always get the bronze, but we can finish well. If we started well, we ought to finish well. He who started a work in us, he will complete it. He will be with us all the way to the end. Let's make sure that we finish well. In spite of our hurts, in spite of our pains, in spite of our disappointments, in spite of our suffering, our Father will help us to finish well as we're intentional in our learning as we're intentional in our serving, as we are intentional in our worship of God. Come on, thank the Lord for his goodness. Thank him for his love. Thank him that we can finish well. Will you stand on your feet if you're able to, if you're able to stand on your feet as the Lord is speaking, as the Lord is speaking, as the Lord is drawing. And he is speaking, he is drawing, and it's up to us to respond to God's call. And we're getting ready to pray, but praying individually, I'll be praying audibly, but you pray to your Father. And then you respond to what God is urging. He's done so much for all of us. We should never turn a deaf ear to what God is saying now. And if you need to know God for yourself as a personal Savior, you can say, Lord, save me. Lord, come into my life. And I receive you as my Savior. Father, we bless you in this place and we honor you. We're grateful, God, for the finished work that you'd completed on the cross. 
God, we reflect back on all the things you brought us out of, and we can rejoice. We can celebrate. We can worship, oh God. We cry out to you, God. You are our Father. You know us from the beginning to the end. Thank you, God, for picking us up when we fail. Thank you, God, for not casting us aside. Thank you, God, for our new, renewed minds. Thank you for making yourself plain and clear, oh God. Thank you for new revelation, oh God, consistent with your word that we were blinded to. Thank you for removing the scales from our eyes, oh God. Thank you, God, for removing shameless and embarrassment, dear God, that were not consistent with you. Thank you for removing fear, oh God. And so we bless you in this place. Touch hearts. Draw men and women to yourself, God. Let your will be done. This is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Come on, celebrate him. Worship the God of heaven. Let him know you adore him. Let him know that you're appreciative of deliverance and being set free. And if there's one today, if there's two, if there's a family that's ready to make their commitment to the Lord, we want to invite you, not to embarrass you, but we want to invite you to come, come, come. The invitation only comes through Christ and our Lord, but we just want to come and celebrate you. Worship you for me. It's your time to get committed. We welcome you. You, Lord, you know that this is your church home, church family. This is your time. We welcome you. We welcome you. And no one can worship you worship for him. me. Worship him. Worship him. Come on, come on, come for on, come on, come on. The Praise God. Things you've done God for family. Me. All right, bless the Lord. Welcome, welcome. Come on, come and on, y'all. No come on, God bless you, sister. I'm sorry, bless you, bless you. Come on, y'all. Welcome, welcome. Come on, come on. He's my worship. Praise All God. of my worship. Receive my worship. Praise. People should be praying. All Come on. My Come on. Bless the Lord. Come on. He is my There's room. There's room. There's room. All of my worship. Reaching my worship. All of my worship. You Lord. You Lord. You are worthy. And no one can worship you for me. For all the things you've done for me. And no one can worship you for me. Here's my worship. Yeah. 
worship you. And as long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. Praise God. Come on, come on. Celebrate God. Celebrate the Lord and his goodness. We are grateful for the three that God has added to this congregation. Come on, thank the Lord for them. Amen. All have accepted the Lord and been baptized and just feel that this is the church family for them. So I, I tend to mess up names, so I'm just going to give them the mic and tell them, just tell them your name. Just tell them your name. My, my name is Monet Ramsey. Right. Welcome, Monet. My name is Lisa Craig Body. And I'm Darnell Body. I didn't mess no names up today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, stretch those hands out, and we're just going to pray for these. So glad. God, thank you so much for moving by your spirit. Thank you, God, for adding to the local church. But we're more than thankful that you've already added to your body, oh God. And God, we just here want to help and to encourage and to allow these special people to use their gifts and their talents to bring glory to you, oh God. And so God, those who are stretching out their hands, oh God, let them be a blessing as well. And we see that we are being blessed as people are using their gifts and talents. And then as we use our gifts and talents, others are being blessed. More importantly, God, you be glorified with all that we do, all that we say. Let these, oh God, be instruments to draw others to you. We praise you and we give you thanks in the name of Jesus, who is our Lord. The people of God said amen and amen. Praise God. You're able to return to your seat and uh, our intake team will see you right after service. Everybody. Pray, God, thank you for this opportunity to worship and give him. God, everything is yours. Everything belongs to you. So now, God, we offer our gifts back to you as our act of worship. We bow down. We surrender, God, a portion of what you blessed us with. Let it be used to bring glory to you. Bless your people, oh God. Lord, wherever there are struggles, God, even as the sacrifices are being made, God, let them see how you can replace, replenish, and give more than they can think, ask, or believe, oh God. Then help us to be good stewards and faithful stewards over what you blessed us with, God, that we might be a blessing to others. This is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Our ushers will be assisting those who are bringing their gifts. You may, be, you may stand and follow the direction of the ushers. Some may give by Givelify. You're able to do that. I think they got the look at Fresh Visions Community Church. You should be able to find us by way of Givelify. Thank you. Thank you for your giving. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. All of my worship, we 
Facing my worship, all of my worship, and I will, I will not be silent. I will always worship you, and as long. God. Come on. Come on. One more time. One more time. Thank the Lord for what he's doing. Thank the Lord for this time of worship and fellowship together. Real brief, real briefly, uh, for those who are not aware, we are still doing our Daniel fast and that will continue until Sunday the 28th. And again, for those who are not aware or have not even tried yet, maybe you're aware uh, we're still doing 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. prayer by way of Zoom. If you need more information, let us know. And we want to welcome you to join. If you never joined yet, it's still time. We've got one more week to go. On the 29th, on the 29th, which is next Monday, uh, for our members, this is for our church members, uh, we have our annual Mission and Vision session. This is where we share where we have come and where we are going. And I just believe that God has something great uh, where he's taken us just as we have some great things to share or be reminded of where he has brought us from. So again, January 29th, 6 p.m., in the fellowship hall, our annual mission and vision sharing. Uh, we break the fast on the 28th, so you'll even be able to eat um, some non-fasting food that, that we'll be offering as well. We're always grateful for those who contribute and give to this ministry. Uh, we're grateful for our members and then some people outside of the church that just say, I want to be a blessing to the church. Uh, uh, God placed it on our hearts to be a blessing. We are grateful for that. And then we're grateful for our finance people who prepares things in such an organized way. So, so help us. We know we want to be good stewards. So help us to save stamp money. Amen. So our finance people are at the Welcome Center. And if your contribution was um, over $200 for the year 2023, there should be a statement for you there. Amen. If you have a request for one, they can help with that if you recorded them with your name throughout the year. So we are grateful for all that has been given and all that... Um, the, the, uh, that we are blessed with and we always want to be faithful stewards. Again, we praise God for who God has added to our ministry. Welcome again. And uh, you'll be hearing more about them. We want them to be part of the newcomers uh, teaching and those who have not uh, completed the newcomers teaching, we will continue that starting on uh, next Sunday in my office at 9.30 a.m. Praise God. Praise God. Everybody good? Aren't you glad that you came? All of our visitors, thank you so much for worshiping with us. I got a chance to meet some for, for the first time and others. You keep coming back, and we are grateful for that. If we haven't had an opportunity to, to greet you personally, my beautiful wife, Jackie, who's in one of the battle suits, uh, with the music ministry, we want to greet you and we want to welcome you as well. You can stand to your feet. Praise God for each of you and make sure you fellowship with somebody, Cornelia, before you leave here and don't get caught up on the trivial things. Amen. Receive the blessing and the benediction. God, thank you for this wonderful time of worship, this wonderful time of reflection. Thank you, God, for the wonderful time of fellowship. God, we are grateful for your people. God, you know some of the challenges 
Lord, some are preparing for surgery and some have gone through surgery, God. Thank you for being a physician. Thank you for being a healer. Thank you for being a restorer, oh God. God, where there are challenges in relationships and marriages, oh God, we pray that you will intervene, that you will speak peace, oh God, that we will not give the devil the stronghold or a slough foot into these relationships. We stand in agreement with you that you are true and your word is true, oh God. Thank you, God, for perfect peace. Thank you for keeping us, God. Now, God, guide us and keep us just as you did when you brought us and allowed us to arrive here safely. And those online, oh God, bless those households and those families, oh God, keep them in perfect peace. We honor you, we give you thanks. We celebrate your goodness, God, now and forevermore. This is our prayer with thanksgiving and the people of God said amen and amen. Make sure you greet somebody. Even welcome these new members. Praise God. <laughs>